legislation. But who's to fight this? Who's to fight this? The rest of the society? The problem is those who bear the burden of the $30 million each only personally pay $1. So you have that diffusion of the burden that creates a, a skewed incentive mechanism for those who will benefit from the government redistribution to fight hard to get it and keep it, by those, while those who bear the burden often find as an individual a little motive or benefit of incurring the personal cost of time, effort, reading, sharing in an anti-tax movement to save what appears to be one dollar uh, by eliminating one tax at a time. So as a consequence of this, you, we've seen this growth of the welfare state. Now, of course, what has happened is that it's not just this more uh, narrow sense of welfare uh, for, for uh, low-income groups. Uh, as you all know, there's this phrase, corporate welfare, right? It's, it's large businesses and corporations. Well, it's the same logic. It's the same logic. Concentrated groups who will get large sums of money, and they use the government as the way to get it. And that is what has caused this growth of it. Now, the, 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 the issue still remains is, well, okay, there was private, uh, welfare, uh, private charity and philanthropy in the 19th century. There's been this growth of the welfare state in the 20th century. Do we really want to go back? or I would put it forward, to a, a privatized system of individual and private association charity and philanthropy again. Uh, would that be better than the modern welfare state, taxed, funded, and managed by the government that has now emerged? Well, maybe it has a rather a shadowy past as how it began, but if it does the job, well, if it ain't broken, why fix it? But the question is, has it solved the problem? Is it, in fact, the mechanism most effective to assist those who it is claimed the, the, the transfers are meant to help? And I would argue purely on this sort of pragmatic or utilitarian basis, a much stronger case can be made on the benefits, the effectiveness, and the efficiency, and the adaptability of private sector solutions to these problems than a continuation or a growth of welfare state programs. Now, why would I say this? Okay. Government bureaucracies, 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 impose one size fits all. Government bureaucracies impose one size fits all. The fact is the program is set up. It sets up conditions and bases of eligibility, requirement, and deservedness, and it makes everyone just conform to that. But the point is, people who fall upon hard times are not all the same. Each of them, uh, to use that, that, that language I used when we talked about Hayek and, and knowledge yesterday, Everyone has their own particular circumstances in their localized uh, position of time and place in the society. Everyone's condition is unique, special, different. People are not the same. But the bureaucracy tends to homogenize everybody for bureaucratic uh, management purposes into, into large clumps of groups. How do you know that this is the best way to assist people who fall upon these problems or have had these difficulties? or specifically are dealing with these hardships or hurdles to overcome as private individuals who have fallen upon these hard times. Therefore, it tends to be a one-size-fits-all, not adaptive and flexible and nuanced to fit the particular needs of the specific individuals or subgroups to whom assistance seems uh, worthy of being given. Let me suggest that government welfare also has the quality of being impersonal and distant. The rules are made in a state capital or a national capital. Uh, a set of bureaucratic agencies are set up in various regions or districts or parts of a country. And a faceless bureaucracy, a faceless bureaucracy, who is, who is nothing more than a government employee at a fixed salary 
with a guaranteed job, right? It's very hard, I don't know about here, but in the United States, unless someone runs around naked or, 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 or steals, you know, some funds, you can't hire, you can't, excuse me, you can't fire a public employee. I'm not even sure about running around naked anymore. <laughs> So it's sort of a faceless and nameless bureaucracy that people deal with. Fill out the farm, wait in line, we'll decide, we'll decide if you're eligible, come back Tuesday. A faceless and impersonal bureaucracy. No or little incentive to solve the problems of those needing help. Okay. Little or no incentive to solve the problems of those needing help. You know, you're hired in one of these government welfare bureaucracies. What's your job? Do the job description. Handle this caseload, fill out these forms, make sure that the paperwork is taken care of, show that you met some basis or or, or, or standard of, of a number of cases you dealt with per week or per month, and then you're, you, you've done your job, it doesn't matter whether the people have been made well, better off or worse off. All you have to do is just fill the job requirement. If you succeed in helping the people, if you fail in helping the people, if you're sensitive towards them, as to whether you're indifferent and callous towards them, it doesn't matter. As long as you've met the job description, it doesn't affect anything. The money comes from the taxpayers. You've met your civil servant job requirements. You come to work at nine, you leave at five, who cares? It, it makes it a totally perverse set of, of, of lack of incentive for any improvement for those who are supposedly coming to you for help. What, 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 how does the, 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 the civil servant caseworker in a welfare program have any incentive to really solve the problem. Even if they have come to the job with the enthusiasm of you know, feeling that they want to help others in society, it's a fine motivation. But the very nature of the bureaucracy is to fill out the forms, meet the caseload, take care of this, give your report, go home. It's a very dehumanizing process that destroys and makes perverse the incentives. I don't know what the Department of Motor Vehicles is like in, in the Bahamas, but I can assure you, I hate going to the Department of Motor Vehicle in the United States. I mean, it's, a, it's a perfect example of that faceless and indifferent bureaucracy. Take it, take it, wait on. You wait in line, you know, to, 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 to register your car, to get your license plate. And then by the time you've waited in line for over an hour, you get up to the counter, uh, sorry, it's break time. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, take a new number. I'll be back in an hour. What? And then, you know, you, you, you finally get up to, to the person with the papers, and what happens? <laughs> You didn't fill out the farm right. Fill it out and we'll get on the back of the... What? I've been waiting here for four hours. That's your own fault. You didn't mark the right box. Mark the box? Just mark, erase it now. It has to be... Just follow the... By the way, that, compare that when you shop in the private sector. Can I help you? What are you looking for? Let me know if I can give you any assistance. In the private sector, it's very simple. The customer is always right in service with a smile. Why? Because the customer can go elsewhere. And these government bureaucracies, they monopolize it. Where are you going to go instead? Oh, the, I find this person rude, indifferent, or unhelpful at the motor vehicle department. Where do I go to license my car instead? Yeah, don't drive, thanks. <laughs> 